People get stuck in the help desk because they choose not to advance. Is CCNA still worth it? Just not seeing net admin roles on Indeed. If you were coming up in tech like me in the early 2000s, CCNA was the gold standard back then. If you got you a CCNA or one of them specialized CCNA certs, you were the man or the woman back in the day. Now, CCNA, Today, I think it's still worth it, but obviously everything is about the cloud and they were shifting to AI and machine learning and, and some other disk cybersecurity as well. I think it's still worth it in the networking world. I always say CCNA is like the Network Plus certification. Network Plus basically teaches you, hey, these are routers, these are switches, and this is what they do. CCNA is pretty much identical to that, except you're just focused strictly on Cisco devices and Cisco networks, Cisco routers and switches. They pretty much dominate the market out there. So it's not going to hurt you to get a Cisco certified networking associate certification. It's not going to hurt you to get one because there are still jobs out there. Like I said, if you want to go into the networking path, there's a lot of jobs out there that will ask you to have the CCNA certification. Network admin, junior network admin, network engineer type of jobs, they'll ask you. And then you can still use those certs and transition into other roles like cybersecurity, cloud, because they all bleed over into each other. But yes, I still think it's worth it. Please make sure your college program has an internship so that you can can get real world application. If your program doesn't have one, please reevaluate. Yeah, I agree with that. They call intern programs. So you go to college, hopefully they, they should have some type of intern program. They did when I went to college way back in the day, back in 1998, when I was a freshman at Tuskegee University. We had internship programs back then too. So they should still have them. And if they do have them, take advantage of them. What is a resource of CompTIA, CYSA, the cybersecurity, uh, what does that stand for? Cybersecurity Analyst. So I don't have any resources for that. You can go on Amazon and look for a book, or you can go on Udemy and find somebody's class that they're selling for $10, $15. That's probably your best bet. Go on Udemy. I'm pretty sure somebody on Udemy is selling the class for 10 or 15 bucks, or Amazon. They got like a thousand million books out there you can pick from. If you're asking me, I don't have anything personally out of my stuff that's focused on that certification, but just get your Google on somebody out there selling the course somewhere or selling a book somewhere or something. It's tough because just starting out without experience because they won't pay you a livable wage. That's why I may need to do this help desk as a second job to start. Yeah. You're not going to come in in a lot of instances making top dollar doing help desk. I mean, that's literally a job. Let me see down here where I live at. I think you can get a help desk job. I think they pay on average like 20 bucks an hour down here. There are some other places that'll pay like 14, $15 an hour. I mean, it's just the, the bare bones entry level job. But the thing about help desk is you just use that as experience so that you can build your resume up so you can put it back out there and hopefully qualify for another job. So your position, you said you had a full time job already and you were doing help desk part time because of the pay discrepancy. I would keep doing that just to get the experience so I can build the resume up, put it back out there and hopefully qualify for a full time job that's paying way more than what the help desk is currently offering you. It says, it is required for a position at my job I want to apply for, but I'm wondering if I should waste my time taking it since CompTIA dominates. Well, you say it's a requirement for the job that you want to apply for. So if you really want that job, then you probably have to get that certification. <laughs> I mean, especially if they're saying that this is a requirement, then I would go get the certification if you want that job. How do people get stuck in help desk or skip it? I see a few tech IT YouTubers made the videos on this topic. People get stuck at the help desk because they choose not to advance. That's it. They become complacent or they just like being at the help desk. That's a possibility as well. So I don't want to be one of these people that just craps on the help desk. There are some people who like the help desk. They love everything about the help desk. They're cool with being there and that's just what they want to do. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Based off of what I've seen, most people get stuck at the help desk because they did just enough to get hired at that job and they got a little bit of money coming in. It's relatively easy. It doesn't really require a whole lot of overthinking. I mean, you answer the phone you're putting in some trouble tickets and you're doing some low level fixes like resetting username and passwords, hooking up printers and stuff like that. If you want to start getting more money, getting higher positions, now you got to start studying for more advanced certifications. And this is where people get turned off about IT is studying for those certs. Even people who work in IT, they don't like to study for certifications. There's a lot of them who don't want to go out there and get certified or they have to force themselves to go through the certification process. If you never go out there and try to get a higher level cert to increase your skill set, 
habits, make yourself remarkable. That is one of the ways you can end up being at the help desk for a very long time because you just choose to not do the things that you have to do to put yourself in position to move up. As a matter of fact, I was on a live stream a few weeks back with a guy who was actually in that position. There was another guy he was talking to and him and this other guy were kind of going back and forth. And then the one guy was like, I've been working in IT for 16 years. And then I came into the panel and I was like, well, I've been working there for 20. So basically it was kind of this thing of, I've been working in tech longer than you. So my voice means more than you. I have more authority, more say than you. So I was like, well, I've been working in for 20 something years. So I'm the boss of this live stream. It was on some crap like that, right? Oh, buddy had mentioned, he said he had been working in tech for 16 years, but he had been working at that help desk for 16 years. So when I came into the thread, I was like, like, what you mean you've been at the help desk for 16 years? Because he was talking to another dude who was a cybersecurity professional. And this guy makes like $200,000 a year, but he's only been working in tech for like 10 years. But you got this help desk dude who's been doing help desk for 16 years, trying to flex on the dude because he got more time in the industry. But it's like, who cares if you got more time? Your position is down here compared to his. Anyways, that particular guy, once we got to talking to him, once I got to ask him, like, how did you, like, what happened in your career? It took him forever and a day to admit that he never did the things he was supposed to do to move beyond the help desk. Like he had become complacent. He didn't want to study for any other certifications. He did just enough to maintain his help desk type of role jobs. And that's what he did. Now, part of me thinks he was cool with that, which like I said, I didn't really come down on the dude because I'm like, maybe that's what he wanted to do. But at the same time, there's a high chance that he just never wanted to do the other things he had to do, i.e. study for higher level certifications so that he can put himself in a position to advance beyond the help desk. Because that's what I personally think. What really keeps people at the help desk is they just don't want to do, they don't want to go out there and study for the other stuff that they have to study for because of various reasons. They're scared to take tests. They don't know how to study. They can't afford some type of training. They can't, you know, it's, it's a whole myriad of reasons, but that's what typically keeps people isolated in those lower level IT roles that they can never move beyond. They just can't do or don't want to do the things they have to do to move up.